So last time what were we talking about? We were talking about how to count. So, so we have these streams x1 to x n or i1 to i xn to xm and we know that it is from 1 to n, okay, 1 to n. And what we were looking for is what is an, so this is our input stream, one by one these numbers are coming from 1 to n and m of them are coming and our objective was, what was our objective? Our objective was, objective was to count number of distinct elements. Right? That was our objective. Okay? And I said that there is a two obvious algorithm that we, we constructed last time uh, and they were what were those obvious algorithms were right. So we said that okay if we know this n we can keep this bit vector of n and if a new element comes I just go which is like 0 like all the bits are set to 0 and if I get something I go and set it to 1 right. If I see some number then I go and set, uh, set that bit to be 1 and then this takes n bits right. Other algorithm could be that I explicitly store the distinct elements okay and that is going to take m log n bits okay. Now m you do not know but suppose you knew n, you know n and we said given that the you know n can be come up with an algorithm, a streaming algorithm which takes log n bits. Can you think of an algorithm? I asked you this question explicitly. These are like puzzles, like it does not, I mean it does not require any science. It is literally like a puzzle and when I give you this kind of question, I, I mean they are puzzles. So please think about 10-15 minutes on that. Just to learn this like small, small uh, tricks in this. So given that suppose you know n, how will you do this? At least this was asking some Google, Google interview. So I mean, it's easy, right? I mean, it's not very hard if I know n to do this, right? What do I do? I implement this algorithm, right? So I store, I have, I store, I do not know, I keep storing the distinct elements x log n. The moment x log n becomes more than n, right, I just forget this and I keep this bit vector, right. And because I have stored all the distinct elements which has appeared up until the stream now, I can update this n bit vector now, right. So if I knew n, I can do this easily. Right? So I store distinct elements explicitly and I just keep checking, oh how many bits I have taken? Is it more than n? The moment it becomes greater or equal to n, at that point I stop, I take a n bit vector, I already have up until now in the stream whatever distinct elements I have seen and I just go and tick those or make those bits, set those bits to be 1 and then after that I follow the first algorithm on that. Right? And I actually do not know, I looked at internet and this, what happens if you do not know n, is it possible to get many of these two algorithms? I really do not know, nobody talks about it, okay. So as I told you that, so this is the best we can hope to do and I will show to you that deterministically, if I wanted to get deterministic plus exact, right, we need omega n bits. So we will give a proof to this today. I also told you that forget about deterministic and exact, deterministic plus approx and by approx I mean constant factor approx, you still need omega n bits, we will still, we will prove this today, 
Okay, but if I asked you, give me poly log n approximation, say log square n approximation in little o of n bits, can you do this? And when I say approximation, so suppose you have to give me m such that it is m divided by log square n, this is, you have to return me m tilde, so, and if m is a real number, like real number of distinct elements, m tilde is a real number of distinct elements, m is a real number of distinct elements, uh, or let's say t is a real number of distinct elements, right, number of distinct elements, then you have to return me this, just to appreciate why, why only we can prove such a kind, certain kind of approximation. So can you give me a log square n approximation in little of n bits? What happens if you run this algorithm for certain amount of time and then you just stop? What kind of approximation it will give you? Suppose I stopped here, I stop. So I, I do x log n bits and I stop first time. So I stop first time when this becomes more than n log square n bits, first time. Then can I get a lower bound on x, number of distinct elements? What will I get? Then, huh? n over log n, right n over log n bits, right? Then I do have an upper bound on x, lower bound on x. What is this? x is at least n over log square n, right? So in this case, whatever this x is, if I output this particular x and I forget it, I like after that I stop counting, let the stream go, I could output anything between n over, uh, output between x and n and that is definitely correct into this range. Right? So if we are looking for poly long n approximation, then we shouldn't be hoping, hoping to get any of these kind of lower bounds, right? Because we can achieve, we can achieve sublinear space bound if we allow ourselves such kind of things, okay? So this is something to keep in perspective, okay? But still, right? So what I say is deterministic plus approximation will take omega n bits. Okay, so before we go, so what did we saw last time, okay? But we saw an algorithm last time which took basically log n space, right? And it gave us, so now we know that these two bounds cannot be achieved and then we said, look, I can come up with an algorithm which will return a t tilde such that probability that t minus t tilde is greater than epsilon t, yeah, is less than delta, okay? What does this mean? I will return you t tilde such that it is between 
1 minus epsilon times t, 1 plus epsilon times t with good probability, right. So, it, it, it is more than like t tilde minus this varies more than this. So, okay. So, this is the algorithm which we got, gave last time assuming certain assumption. So, what was our algorithm? So, this was our, this is what I call idealized algorithm. So, what do we know? That if we want to beat this lower bound, we need, we need what? Randomization plus approximation both. Okay. So, okay. So, what was this algorithm? So, this idealized algorithm was pick a random hash function h from n to 0 1 and this is I treat 0 1 as a real line, it is like real line, okay. And what I do I maintain? I said maintain the min hash, maintain counter x equal to minimum over i in stream h i, okay. And third was output 1 over x minus 1, okay. So, this is also called uh, min count or if you look at Google, this is called min counter or something. And the intuition was that if you think of this 0, 1 interval, then all these numbers 1 to n are uniformly distributed like 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, 4 over, like 4 goes to 4 over n, blah, 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 okay. Uh, which means that even if I have m objects, right, they are like, they goes to like, like, mth fraction of the first number will go to mth fraction, second number go to 2 by mth fraction and so on and so forth. So, if I knew the least number and if I take 1 by x minus 1, that will give me the number of elements. So, that was the idea and we proved using Chebyshev and everything that this works very well and this is what we called fm and then we made fm plus which was like taking several copies of this and taking the med av median of that and then we made fm plus plus which achieved this in space if I recall correctly, right, taking the median it achieved space big O of log 1 over delta times epsilon square times log n. But assuming that we have an access to a random hash function but we do not have access to such a. So, today's lecture we will try to remove this idealized condition okay, at the cost of another log, log n factor in this. Okay. Is the setting clear? What we want to do, what we want to achieve and so on and so forth. Okay. So, how many of you know k by is independent random variables? Do you know Sovic k wise independent random variable? No. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay, so let us, I will give you a primer on k wise independent random variable, but if you, you can check Google and all this like some Wikipedia page and that is, okay. So, here is my definition, okay. So, the, and this is an one of the normal way of making an algorithm. So, this is generally used for making randomized algorithm deterministic, but we will use this to simulate a completely random function to a, a like slightly non-random function which you takes small amount of space. The problem is this storing this random function itself could take us uh, like roughly like n, more than n bits right, then 
this doesn't. So somehow we have to come up with an algorithm or come up with a hash function which mimics the properties of this hash function and takes small amount of space to store. Okay. So what is the definition? A family of functions h from a to b, right? Like this is like 1 to a to 1 to b, like these are integers. So whenever I write bracket, it means 1, 2, 3 up to a, 1, 2, 3 up to b is k wise independent, okay? Is k wise independent. If for all j1, j2, jk in B, okay, if for all j1 to jk in B and for all distinct i1, i2, ik in A, probability that h chosen uniformly at random from this family, okay, h of i1 is equal to j1 and h of i2 is equal to j2, h of ik is equal to jk is equal to what you expect. If this would have been a completely random function, what do you expect? If h would have been completely random function, then what do you expect? And when I say completely random function, I assign h of anything like a, one of these one to be uniformly at random, okay? If I had such a function, then what do you expect from this? What will be this? If h would have been purely random function, like I, for every domain, every element in the domain, I choose one of the value in the range uniformly at random, okay? Then what do you expect here? 1 over exactly 1 over b to the power k. So this is a property, right? So I do not, I'm saying that it is a k wise that if I take any k tuple, it behaves like purely random function, but I don't know what happens if I take k plus 1. I don't know what happens if it is k plus 2. Okay. Okay. You can also show, so this is something to show. If h is k wise uh, independent has function has function then it is also k prime by is independent has function for k prime less than equal to k okay it requires proof i mean it's not obvious but you can prove this. Okay. Okay. So let's take one example. H is set of all functions functions from A to B. Is it, is it K wise, ha, it is, is it K wise independent? I claim that this is K wise independent for every K up to A. For all K this is K wise independent. Why? Because choosing a random function from here is same as choosing a function where for every element I assign one of the elements of 1 to be uniformly at random. Right? So if I have set of all function then this is exactly like it is k wise independent for all k. But now how many bits 
you need to store a function in this family. So if I have a set of objects, right, how many bits do I need to store an element of that set? Like at least, otherwise, log of that. So what, how many functions are there in H? How many functions are there in H? Huh? B to the power A, right? Because for every element in A, I have B choices and this. So even to, ind to index a function in this, I need how many bits? Log of this bits, which means I need A log B bits. So for example, if A equal to B equal to N, then this is going to take N log N bits. Not great. I mean, if we are working, if we are going in the world of sublinear and this and that, I mean, this kind of, this kind of families is not going to work for us. So we need better family of has function. But look, I don't want my set of my family to be independent for all, right? All I care about is that it is independent up to some stage. And after that it is dependent, I do not care, right? So I have that liberty, okay? So here is another construction for such. And this is like, so you fix a finite family, finite field, F. So generally, FQ, so Q is going to be some P power L where P is prime. Okay? Okay? So now I'm going to take what is H poly. So I'm going to take H poly, all polynomials of degree k minus 1 in f q of x. So what is the meaning of this is that it's like it's a polynomial in variable x. So it will be like a0 x, a1 x, sorry, yeah. I mean, a0, a1x, a2x squared, dot, 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 ak minus 1, xk minus 1. So it's a degree k, right? Where each ai belongs to fq, okay? And how will, so how will you evaluate this? So at any point, you just evaluate that, right? So you look at this polynomial and evaluate, you just replace x with that point and whatever point it gives you in the field, that is the point you take, okay? So this is, this is what I call H poly. What is the size of H poly? Hmm? Right? So for A0, I have a Q choices. A1, I have Q choices. So I have Q to the power K such choices. Okay? And so, hum, so to, to know this function, how many bits do I know? Do I need to know? If I knew a0, a1, a2, ak minus 1, then I know what function I'm talking about, right? So storing a0 to ak minus 1 is good enough for us to remember the function, right? How many bits do I need to store this? So this definitely I need some k times how many bits, right? Log q because any of these numbers are, could be one, one of these one to q. So k times log q, okay. But look, such functions exist for every free, right? Every q, right? So this q is in my hand. Right? So if I took a field, which is like say, if I needed n bits, right? If, my, if I wanted my field to be size, n sized field, 
right? If I wanted my functions to go from 1 to n to 1 to n and suppose n is a prime for now, how many bits will I need? k times log n bits, okay? Now, so this is, this is a one construction and And the next question is, why is this the desired object? This is not very hard to show. What do you want? So given, look, what, I, what I'm talking about, look, this j1 to j, like this i1 to ik are distinct. j1 to jk may not be distinct, but this i1 to ik are distinct. And what do you want? h of i1 is equal to j1 and h of i2 is equal to j2, h of ik is equal to jk. So it's like an interpolation, right? It's like a Lagrange interpolation. I know values at certain set of points, then other guys can be uniquely determined. So what does it mean, h of i1, right? What will be h of i1? So I, if I fix a polynomial here, right, some a0 this thing. So like what will be h of i1 equal to j1? So this will be a0, i1, right? No, a0 plus, so what do I need to satisfy? a0, i1, a0, i1, am I writing correct? Sorry, a1, a0 plus a1 plus a2, a k minus 1, i1, k minus 1 should be equal to j1, dot, dot, dot. What is this? this? Uh, I k, right? A zero, A one, I k, A two, I k square, dot dot dot, A k minus one, I k k minus one, equal to J k, which is same as writing this as one 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 i1, did I write correctly? Yeah, this is fine. i1 square dot 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 i k minus 1, k minus 1. Sorry, i1, i k, i k square, i k, k minus 1, right? Right? And this is like a, this is, so this has a unique value, right? If this is invertible, and this is vendor mode matrix, and this is invertible, okay? I mean, do your calculation, but this is exactly how it goes, okay? So this is how you construct. So if I was looking for two wise hash function, how much bits it will take? If I was looking for not k two wise has function, two wise independent has function, how many bits do I need? Order log n bits because two times log n, right? So we are going to implement this algorithm with two wise independent random variable. And now, why are we going? So if you recall, uh, okay. So is this? So this is like this is something which is like independent of this. And this is being used like in randomized algorithms, de-randomization and blah, blah, blah. Now, look, so suppose, what is the family, what is the family, what is the size of this q power k, right? Now, it inherits all the properties of k by its independent hash function. So if my algorithm was only using limited independence, then how can I de-randomize that algorithm? Go each of this function and run my algorithm, right? I'm done. But unfortunately, if we do that for us, I mean, I can make deterministic counting, but like even with two wise independent, how many such functions are there? Like something like n square. So I cannot do n square, run them in parallel, right? That is going to take a lot of space. So rather than, we're just going to just pick one of one function from h poly uniformly at random. Okay. Any question? Okay, good. 
So So we'll work with this. Okay. So now I'm going to make a non-idealized algorithm, right? This is our goal, to make a non-idealized algorithm. So let's make some changes. pick rather than random hash function, we will say pick. So for simplicity, I'm going to assume that n is power of 2 power l, okay? Otherwise, we can do some doubling tricks and these things. But for, for, bre for brevity and simplicity, we are going to assume that the universe size is going to be some power of 2, okay? Okay, so pick a random hash function random hash function h from n to n from a two bys independent, uh, two bys independent hash families, right? So, which is like h poly, let's say, okay? Let's call k here, so then it's like h2 poly. Right? Okay. Now we need to change counter. What should we be storing? And then what should be the output? Right? Okay. So now we want to make this idealized. Okay? So there the idea was that look. I have this 0 to 1, right, 0 to 1, it goes blah. So if I know the least number, if I divide by that, I know the total number of distinct elements, right? But now what should I do? Yeah, so like an integer comes, i1 comes, I store h of i1. i2 comes, I store h of i2. But before, what were we storing? We were storing just min of something, something, right? At any point of time, we were not storing more than one number. So now given this two by has function, what should I store? Right, what should I return? Hmm? Think, I mean, you have to understand the properties of H, okay. This is why I use the word that if H is two wise independent random variable, it is also one wise independent random variable. What is the meaning of that? So, we are mapping one to N to one to N, right? H of some value x, x in n is equal to y in n is equal to 1 by n. Because it's two wise independent random variables, it is also one wise independent random variable. Right? So it's a uniform over its range. Okay, so how do I utilize that? It is a bit non-trivial, but it is like, okay. So, let's ask ourselves, let's write down these 1 to n in binary. Let's write down, let's try to write down this 1 to n in binary, right? And we will use log n bits, exactly log n bits, okay? So, like 0, 0, 0 is fine, but we will use total of 
log n bits. And this is fine because we are writing in binary n is power of 2. This is why I chose this. Okay. If I ask you the following question, how many string and look, how many so this is uniform we saw, okay. So I will ask you, let's say AJ, AJ is set of, set of numbers in such that least significant bit set of, uh, like, let's say, this is not right way of writing. Let's say x, x in 1 to n, least significant bit of x equal to j. Now let me tell you what I mean by least significant bit, okay? So okay? So if you go from right to left, the first position where you see 1 is I call least significant bit, right? So what is the least significant bit here? What is the least significant bit here? Still 2. What is the least significant bit here? 3. So aj equal to x, x in 1 to n, least significant bit of x equal to j. What is the size of aj? So I have chosen this function, right, h, right? x in h, I should not write s, h of x. Right? Least significant bit of h of x is j. Hmm? Or 2 raised to j plus 1. Because you start from the 0th bit, 1, 2. So this is like, I, I was wrong. You, you should always start from 0th bit. Okay? So this is 0th bit, 0, 1, 2, log n minus 1. Okay. So he's saying aj should be n divided by 2 to the power j plus 1. Why? All right. It means jth bit has to be 1 and rest all the bits has to be 0. Okay. But that still does not tell us that aj should be equal to this, right? This is right. So, what are we looking for? We are looking for those elements which are mapped to this, where each of these guys, like last j plus 1 bits look like 1, 0, 0, 0, like j zeros trailing. I agree. This is how it looks low. Right? How many of you agree to this? Look, we just said they are uniform over all this, right? Okay. So if they are uniform over these things, so I am looking for those elements in X. Actually, it is not, AJ is a wrong word to say, okay? It is expectation aj, which is this, right? It is expectation, expected size of this, which is equal to this. Because everything is with some probability, right? Look, so what I mean by this? So, hmm? Okay, so let's for example, uh, to define aj, I define y1, y2, uh, yn. This is 1 if h of x1 
like least significant bit of h of x1 is equal to j1, okay? Zero otherwise, right? Now clearly, cardinality of aj is summation of yi, right? What is the probability that yi is equal to 1? It means I have been mapped to these set of numbers. So, how many such numbers are there? Well, the favorable numbers are at last trailing bits, I exactly want j plus 1 bits to act like this, right? And rest of the bits could be anything, right? So, this is like 2 to the power L minus j plus 1, right? Which is 1 over 2 to the power j plus 1 and there are n of them. So, by linearity of expectation, it is n over 2 to the power j plus 1. Okay, great. So, how many numbers will you see? How many, how many numbers are mapped? How many numbers has least significant bit? Zero. How many has least significant bit? Zero. Half of them. Great. How many of them have least significant bit? One. Huh? N by four. Great. How many of them has least significant bit? Log t minus one. One by what? One by t. Why? Sorry. Okay. Say log n minus one. No. It is. Uh, how many? What is the expected size of A Z? How many numbers? Like, what is the cardinality of? A, what is the expected size of expected size of just now you said n to the power 2 to the power j plus 1. So, this is 1, right? So, as I increase, I expect to see number of people at log n bit this much. Now, Suppose I had t distinct numbers, okay? I had t distinct numbers. Now, let us do the whole calculation with respect to t distinct elements, okay? Now, what is aj? I still write x in, x in, I will not write in n, I will write x in stream, least significant bit is this, okay? Now, y1 to yt, Suppose there are t distinct elements, so I only want to do this, then what will I get here? I still get this, but by linearity of expectation, I will get t to the power 2 to the power j plus 1. Then if I see at log t minus 1 bits, what will I see here? What will be the expected size here? 1. So if I remember the largest least significant bit, right? then I know that that is the place where the my number and this is going to be equal. So, and then I can output 2 to the power x and then I am done, right? Or So, what should, I what should I store? Max i in string least significant bit of h of i. Okay? And then I would like to output this. Is the intuition clear? Why are we doing this? Right? That is the time when expectation is like, I, see, I expect to see one people there. Right? And as I grow up, I expect to see very less people. As I go 
far away from this, I expect to see fewer and fewer set of people. Okay? Okay, so. Okay, so now let's do some computations and let's see that this is, first let's make a constant factor approximation algorithm and then we will use this constant factor approximation algorithm to output something. So when I say constant factor approximation, I mean with very high probability it will return something between T by C and at most like, so we are going to return T tilde which is going to be T times C at most C times T for suitable C, right? So first using this, let's make a constant factor approximation like just, so I'm claiming that this is a constant factor approximation algorithm, okay? But we need to prove this, that this is a constant factor approximation algorithm. We need to use the fact that this is two by centipedal dynamic. Okay, so at least I have given you intuition of why we, d we chose this as our counter and why did we output this. So the basic property in all of these algorithms are, the algorithms are generally simple, but you need to know why you're, why you're using counter or something in an appropriate way. So more or less we have actually done the proof. So let's just give a formal look to all this. For a fixed j, let zj be the number i, numbers, number of i in a stream whose least significant weight is the number of stream. So that maybe. So this is basically what is ZJ is like I H of this is what I wrote AJ, right? I in stream H least significant bit of right? This is what ZJ is. Okay. And we just had random variables YA one and zero. One, if least significant bit of H of I is J, zero otherwise, and we saw that J J is uh, nothing but summation I in stream Y I, and by whatever argument we gave, what is expected of expectation of J J is nothing but number of distinct elements divided by 2 to the power j plus 1, okay? Right? So th if this is what is true, then what is an expectation of z greater than j? What is the expectation of z greater than j? Right? It is nothing but summation over expectation of Z J prime J prime greater than equal to J plus one. Now this is what it is like. Like you can write Z greater than J equal to summation, right? So actually this is how it should be written. This is nothing but expectation of summation J prime greater than equal to J plus one, right? But you can apply linearity of expectation. And so what will it be? It will be equal to t times 2j plus 2 dot 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 dot, right? But this is not, we can show that this is like roughly t to the power 2j, less than t power 2j plus 1, 
right? Because you can take two tj plus one common, one plus half, blah, blah, blah. So this is like, okay? Okay. What can you say about yi's? I claim pairwise independent standard variable. Do you see this why? Look, they started with h being pairwise independent and variable, but from there yi's will inherit the property that they are pairwise independent and variable. It requires proof. I mean, it's not obvious, okay? But it's not very hard, okay? So I leave this as an exercise, okay? This is like really just doing brute force testing, okay? But assuming that H, and that's the only place we are going to use that, this is the only reason why we use the fact that H is pairwise independent and variable, okay? Now, why? Because we said last time that variance, right, of set of variables, random variables, sum up if they're pairwise independent random variable, okay? And that's the only reason we need it. Last time we used that it was completely independent, but to use the fact that variance of sum of, sum of random variable is sum of the variance of each individual random variable, all we need is that these random variables are pairwise independent. Because covariance of this only required that So what is the variance of ZZ is nothing but summation over variance of YIs, right? Which is equal to uh, T times. So what is this? So this is going to be equal to, let's write down. variance of summation yi, i in stream from here. I have just written the definition and which is nothing but expectation of expectation of whole square just by definition which is same as what is this? If you notice, this is going to be uh, right? And this is where we are going to use the fact that they are pair by independent to say this is nothing but i1, i2, expectation of y i1. Right. From here, what will you get? From here, you will get squares, and from here, yeah. So those those guys will get cancelled, right? From here, square here squares will get cancelled, right? So here it is i1 i2 i1 i2. But these yi's are pair by independent, so. Summation I1, I2, expectation of I1, expectation of I2, which is equal to so what is variance of ZZ? What was the expectation of yi? One over two power j plus one, right? Hmm? So it is t square.
Wait, wait. It is T into T minus one. Choose T one by two power J plus one whole square. No? This is what I think it is. This is something, I'm getting something funky. Okay, wait. So what is the variance of this guy? This seems fine, no? Yes. Yes. At least to me, this seems fine. Okay, but, but why does it say this? Says that this is less than t by two j plus one. Why variance is less than expectation here? Is it clear? Okay, let me check. So if I did here itself, I could have done here also. So what is variance of yi? Variance of yi is uh, expectation of yi square minus expectation of yi whole square. All right? Okay. So this is this I know. This I have already computed. Expectation of yi was one by two power j plus one. Right? Right? So this is whole square. So this is expectation is one by 2 power j because it's 2 times like square, right? So this into this. Oh, is it correct? No. No, 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 no. It is this. It is this. Which is like it this build over. Now, yes? What expectation of? Expectation of y square is equal to expectation of y whole square. That's what we assume and then get Oh, maybe that is where I made a mistake. Okay, just wait a minute. Okay. So what is y i square? Yeah. Because y i's are independent random variable. So what is expectation of y? y i square is expectation of u. So this is expectation of y i times expectation of y i. So y square, so expectation of y i square is the same as expectation of y i. y i square also takes value 1 epsilon. Yes. And it takes 1 with the same probability. 
which is this yeah. 1 by 2 power j plus 1 right right so this is what it is okay so now okay so this is what we have and we have to show this is nothing but uh, 2 times 2 times j plus 1 right i think i could have taken this common so this is nothing but uh, 1 by 2 power j plus 1 1 minus 2 power j plus 1 right and now how many yi's are there t of them right so this is like uh, t times so if i compute variance of zj i'm going to get t times 2 power j plus 1 1 minus 1 by 2 power j plus 1 and this is less than 1 so this is less than t by 2 power j plus 1 okay fine yes because y is a pair by independent and a pair okay so maybe this was not the right way i mean this also will give you same thing but okay at least this looks more cleaner okay okay so what did we learn we learned that variance is less than its expectation variance of jj is less than expectation of jj this is what it showed to us okay now Okay, so let us ask J star, okay, is between say, suppose J star, I mean it is not less, is log t minus 5, okay, then what is the expected value of J star? Huh? What is this? Look, at log t, it was 1. So if I go below, I should get more numbers. It is like between 16 and 32. Okay. But I want this to happen with, I do not want expectation of jj to go beyond between these two numbers like it should, I do not want them to vary with too much because I want to show that we I mean we are returning this number within some constant range with very high probability okay. I will also do it so look here is here is your log t right I am saying look to give a constant factor approximation I say look what we are storing here is somewhere here with very high probability. Then we are going to return you a number which is constant factor approximation to the real number with very high probability, right. So I am just saying that look expected value of j is this and this happens with very high probability, okay. I will also show to you when j star is going to be log t plus 5, I mean suppose, so like here this also will happen with low probability then I will union bound these two probabilities to say look. I mean this is a low probability event so with very high probability the whatever object we have returned lies within this range okay okay so this is nothing but we will apply some chebby job here and for this we will apply some markov it should be enough okay so let's ask ourselves what is the probability that jj star equal to 0 okay this is less than equal to probability that j star deviates from its expectation by how much say at least 16 right then only j, j, j star is going to be 0 and this is if you apply Chebyshev what is this?
we can show some 1 over 5 or something, okay, just apply. Okay, this is not something, okay. So, if I do log t plus 5, I mean you can show, this is not something, I mean amazing happening here, okay. What is the expectation of z, j star here? It's roughly 1 over 16, okay. And then let us ask ourselves, what is the probability that z, j star is greater than equal to 1? By Markov it is, hmm? what is this? 1 over? That's it, right? So what I have been able to show? Look, so I have been able to show to you that chances that you lie beyond this happens with very low probability, right? So probability that what we are going to return is a say factor 32 approximately. Look, maybe if these numbers are not right, I mean you just put appropriate constant, make, maybe you have to take a bigger chunk, but that is an idea. Idea is very simple that look, I have taken enough big chunk that I can apply Chebyshev, Markov and I am showing to you that hey, with very high probability, I am going to return you some integer from here, like this, the counter is going to store some number from here and hence 2 power x is a good estimate for this with very high probability, okay. So what do I expect from all this? Okay, so what I want that probability that T tilde is T over 32 less than 32 over T with at least two third probability. This is what it is, okay. And you can choose all these things in a uh, appropriate way that this happens, two third, like you all have to do union bound means you have to sum up these probabilities and this is like 1 over 16, 1 over 5, so this is less than 1 third, okay. But you get my point? So we had a good estimator, we had a good estimator, we used pairwise independent random variable and we outputted this. So now tell me how much space did this algorithm took? To give a factor 32 approximation, how much space did we used? algorithm I wrote it down, so it is not something which is like, this is like analyzing time, right? I wrote down the algorithm, I am asking how much space it took. So pick a random fu hash function from this. So what will you do? N is some power of 2 power L, so this is a field itself, right? So all I needed, as I told you, right, all I needed to store A0 and A1. So for A0, you guess 1 to N uniformly at random. How many bits it will take to store A0? Log n bits. A1, I again do uniformly at random from 1 to n. How much space it will take? Log n bits. So this, this takes 2 log n bits first step and maintain a counter x which just remembers a least significant bit of this, right? How much it, how much it will take? Log n, really? It's actually going to take log log n space. Right, because it is only 1 to log n. So this is like, right, so definitely this takes order log n space and with very high probability gives us a constant factor approximation, okay. Now we zoom in and we are going to make a 1 plus epsilon approximation to this number, but then at the cost of log. So we are going to do some, some sort of uh, binary search. And that is why it is going to take log n. But this is not those kind of binary research, okay? Okay, at least this part I still do not have very good intuition why it works, but I will tell you this works and I will show you how it works, okay? Any questions till so far? Okay.
So, we are going to refine to 1 plus epsilon approximation with high probability. So, what is the trivial solution to this problem? I would have stored all the distinct element, but that is going to take a lot of space. That was the only issue. So, what we are going to choose? So, here is my trivial solution. So this is, we will we'll call this Ts, okay. Stores first c over epsilon square elements, okay. And like stores uh, distinct elements among first phi over epsilon square elements in stream, that is it. So, here is the counter, first element comes, so, so here is a, a stream coming, here is a number of c over epsilon square. So, among here, he will store all the distinct elements. Imagine yourself if I ran this algorithm and outputted whatever solution it returned, then when will it be correct? If the total number of distinct element is less than equal to c over epsilon square, then this trivial solution is definitely correct. I do not do anything, but if there are much more than c over epsilon square, then this is a very big underestimate of the total number of distinct elements, right. But somehow we will use this trivial solution extremely cleverly to output things in a interesting manner, okay. So what we do, so let us call, we will call it Ts. I imagine myself that my stream, there are like several instantiation of my stream is running in parallel. So instantiate instantiate ts0, ts1, ts login, okay. So they, this trivial algorithms, so look stream is coming one by one. So this is like think of this, these are parallel boxes which are running, parallel boxes which are running, okay. So there are parallel boxes which are running. Now I have to feed which element should I give to whom so that it is stores? And here we use this clever trick. So, second step is we pick G from n to n from a two wise independent hash family. So, tell me. So, now guy has come, right, some i has come, which stream do I send him to? I would like to feed i to one of these algorithms, right. I do not want to feed all the streams to everybody, no, 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 no. I decide whom to feed where. feed i to ts so for every least significant bit i am running a stream for every least significant i am running a stream So now what is happening? Look at the log th stream. How many people did you expect to see yourself there? One, right? Only one, right?
right? Because if you remember, it was T by V, like pumped it up and did something, right? But actually, how many number of elements will go there? One. Expected number of elements that will be mapped to that place is one. Now we and now we also have an approximation which tells us <laughs> where which all range it lies to, right? So now I say, look, I, I expect to see small number of people here and I'm anyway going to return something like 2 power x or something like, like we have to decide all those. So now maybe at this place, number of people which can go here, like expecting to see here one person is what we expect, but I could also see no person, I could also see 10 person. So variance is very high, right? So, but if we could control this variance and say, look, number of distinct people which will go to this is not too large with respect to epsilon. And then if the output, whatever that j comes and two power blah, which we already know, then we will be in good shape, right? So it's like, a, I know where to go. I'm further refining how many distinct people I need to see there. Okay, so at least this is what the intuition is. Okay, so I'll tell you what happens. Fourth, my God, I'm extremely slow. So what will you output? What should you output? Two power j plus one. Is this what we are outputting? Yes. Where? Yes? This is an algorithm. We are instantiating log n plus 1 trivial solutions. Okay? So what does trivial solution does? It just takes certain number of first set of elements and that's it. Okay? Now the idea is that look. So what is a what is TS0 will do? It is going to be fed all those elements whose least significant bit is zero. Right? And what it does, if there are many of them are coming, it just takes for t by epsilon square and discards everything else, and he has all the number of distinct elements from there. Okay. Second stream is basically all those numbers goes there whose least significant bit is one so on and so forth. So whenever a stream comes, I, I also have chosen wise independent random hash function. I look at the num number, I look at his least significant bit and based on that, I feed to one of these TS algorithms. Okay, that's it. This is the end of the algorithm. And what does this TSI algorithm does? It just looks at first C by epsilon square elements in the stream which I have fed and keeps the distinct number of elements. Now, because of our expectation analysis, I hope or we expect that at the tth place, at the, at the tth place, right, log tth place, expected number of objects which I am going to see is 1. So it means if c by epsilon square number of objects will go there, like which is more than 1 or 2 or some constant, right, then definitely it will see the number of distinct elements there, as many distinct elements which you need to see. But anyway, number of distinct elements that we expect to see which has least significant bit log t is 1, right? So, it, so this small sample 
will capture those objects. That's the idea. Okay. Now you can ask me, how do you know this J? How do you know? Look, to do this, I need to know. I mean, how do I decide which J to output? Right? Hey, but we have a we made constant factor approximation, right? That gives me a good approximation to T. So if I know some good approximation to T, I know a good approximation to J2. Right? And that is why we made this. So in parallel to all this algorithm, I will also be running this algorithm to get an estimate at the same time and then giving feeding these people up. Okay? Okay. At least this, this is what seems to be happening. Okay? Okay, I will not, I don't have time to give you proof, proof, but let me at least tell you why this works. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to do this expectation analysis, but I'll still tell you why this works. TS will use C over epsilon square times log n, log square n. So, we did achieve 1 plus epsilon, but now since you did lot of binary research, you, you are incurring log n extra, right? Because each TS0 takes C over epsilon square log n, time log square n plus 2 log n plus log log n from here because we are also running this constant factor approximation. That's a plus, right? But this is the only thing which multiplies, okay? So a space here is going to be big O of, okay, so before I do analysis, let me So, my God, I am extremely slow. Okay, so what did we achieve? If you notice, we achieved C by epsilon square times log square n for this part of the algorithm and another log n from there, which will be eaten of this. So, we took, we gave you this algorithm. Okay, so let me give you a state of art what is known here. So what is known here is order 1 over epsilon square plus log n is known and this is tight, space wise, okay, okay. So let's do a quick analysis of why this is correct, 1 plus epsilon, you will see in a minute, it's not some very big maths going on. Okay, and there's a reason why we chose this, right? Why not something else and this, we'll see. Let bj be the number of distinct elements hashed by g to tsj. How many distinct elements it will hash? We know, we have computed this. Let's call this QJ, okay? Right? By Chebyshev, Right? This is exactly what it does. So it approximates with respect to plus minus square root of this. This is exactly what Chebyshev does, right? If you have taken a third moment, you will get one third here. If you are taking fourth moment, then you will get fourth here. And if you just take one moment, which is Markov, you just get additive. So remember this, okay? Now, so what does this, I mean, if, look, I have chosen right t in the sense that this is a very constant factor approximation to this is why I used. So if I 
if qj is greater than or equal to some c over epsilon square or 1 over epsilon square does not matter right 1 over epsilon square if qj is greater than or equal to 1 over epsilon square then what is this quantity bj is so then bj is going to be uh, uh, qj times right then then this is going to be 1 plus minus epsilon qj right but what is qj is a correct estimate for whatever we wanted and uh, right and that's it there is nothing more to, than this that is happening here right so when qj is less than this you will run your trivial solution. If qj is larger than this, then you run this algorithm. So if you do this change of analysis, this is exactly what it will give you. Now you could ask us that look, why did I choose qj is greater than or equal to 1 over epsilon square? Like why here not choose epsilon to the power 10? Does it help? Because look, as precise you will choose this here, you will get better and better. Epsilon equal to 1000, you will get 1 plus minus 1 over 100 approximation, right. So if I chose some bigger number, I would have get, but the problem is if you chose epsilon to the power 10, it does not matter because you are not going to store anything in any way of this because after epsilon square, this trivial solution stops working, like they do not care, right. So I mean it still requires, okay, you want the terms here to be uh, smaller and blah, 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 but this is a job of people who are taking scribe, okay, to like make it precise and see it there, okay, any question, okay. So look, I mean, as I told you before, like I understood this algorithm, why this works. I more or less understand why did we choose these things, right, but still it is a leap of faith in my head. I understand why we are trying to do this because we expect just one element to go there, right. So basically what is happening in all these algorithm is if you notice that I have a number, right. So I will give you an example. So have you seen a probabilistic argument to count number of min cuts? What do we so? We say hey probability that the number of like probability that a min cut survive with this randomized algorithm is 1 over n square on n choose 2. And then because of that we said hey number of such objects is upper bounded by n choose 2, right. So what are these objects are doing? In some sense we are taking the, the real number, we are making it smaller and smaller and when we are approximating it with something, some multiplier or some uh, divide or whatever you want to say, we, we are losing some factor right and that is what we are able to achieve in terms of approximation right. So for example when you do bin packing and all this right how do you get 1 plus epsilon approximation you look at these weights if they are too large you divide it with some appro appropriate this thing and whatever you get small numbers you work with this. This is exactly what we are trying to achieve here right. So we are saying that look at that stage if this is how it is, number of objects which has gone here, number of distinct elements which has gone here is like 2 power j times this, right? And only one has gone. So basically all I am outputting is like 2 power j, 2 power j plus 1. This is what I am going to output you all the time, right? But that is only going to be a closure and closure approximate to the real real number of distinct elements. It is never going to be that all the, all the time in my stream, number of distinct elements is going to be power of 2. I mean. Okay, anyway, so I did not reach lower bounds. So what will I, to, what will I do, what will I do tomorrow is first give you two lower bounds and then we will move to, so this is also called F0 sampling or something. So we will move to F1, F2 samplings, okay.